Good morning, everyone. We'll start today's Metro COVID-19 press briefing with Mayor John Cooper, followed by Dr. Alex Jahangir, Chair of the Metro Board of Health and Metro Coronavirus Task Force. We're joined today by Moselle Martin, owner of Martin's Chicken and Waffles, Director Chief William Swan of the Office of Emergency Management and National Fire Department, and Dr. Michael Caldwell, Director of Public Health, are here to help answer your questions. We'll now begin with Mayor John Cooper. Good morning, Nashville. Yesterday, the seven-day daily average of new confirmed cases, this is nationwide, was 66,000. Now, that's an unacceptably high number, but it was the lowest it's been in the U.S. in 10 days. Now, Nashville appears to be following a hopeful trend right now, which may indicate signs of a slowdown in new cases. The efforts here and of many neighboring hotspot cities and states may be beginning to pay off. Now, these efforts have required 21 out of 50 states, including Arkansas, Mississippi, Alabama, South Carolina, and North Carolina, to pause or reverse their reopening plans. And 32 states, including Arkansas, Kentucky, Virginia, North Carolina, and Alabama, have implemented statewide mask ordinances after recognizing the importance of face coverings in slowing the spread of the virus. Now, joining the efforts in these other states, Nashville has both reversed our reopening plan by returning to a modified phase two and implemented a countywide mask ordinance. We've also implemented other public health orders intended to slow the spread of the coronavirus. Now, early indications confirmed by Vanderbilt researchers show that the new protocols adopted here and your dedication to following them are working in Davidson County as they are working in other cities and states that have adopted them. Nashville remains in serious but stable condition. As of this morning, our 14-day new case rolling average has moved from red to yellow. On July the 4th, this metric was 397. Today, our case average is 342, which is still below satisfactory, but an improvement from its previous rate. And our transmission rate two weeks ago was in the red at above 1.2. It is now green at 0.99. And Nashville's seven-day positivity rate is at 13.3%, down from 18.5% two weeks ago. Let me be clear. The difficult work of responding to the coronavirus still lies ahead. We are on a trail that can lead us out of the wilderness, but we are still deep in the woods. One wrong move, one brief moment of distraction, and we will lose our bearings. We must hold on to the progress we've made, which is why we will remain in a modified phase two for the time being. All other restrictions, including a temporary closure of all bars, limited service restaurants, and transportainment vehicles, and the 10 p.m. closure of all restaurants in Davidson County will be extended at least until midnight on the evening of August the 16th. Public Health Order 9 will be further amended and announced later this week. Now, yesterday, Dr. Deborah Burks, the White House Coronavirus Response Coordinator, visited Tennessee, one of the 18 hotspots identified by the White House nationwide to share what the federal government has learned about the virus and what is working to slow its spread. Dr. Burks particularly warned of residents under age 30 becoming vectors for the disease and of surging cases among rural communities, both of which we are seeing here in Tennessee. In the first week of July, Nashville accounted for an average of 27% of the daily new cases of COVID-19 in Tennessee. That number has shrunk to just 15.5%, as 88 out of all 95 counties are above the state's threshold for acceptable virus transmission. Dr. Burke strongly warned that based on their findings, mask mandates, bar closures, and social distancing measures must be in place statewide to mitigate the spread of the virus. Now, as a healthcare hub for the entire region, Nashville's healthcare capacity is vulnerable to rural counties that do not require masks or adopt public health protocols to keep their residents safe. We will continue to insist on a coordinated response based on what we know has worked for other countries and other states to help stem the tide of the coronavirus 
and save lives. Recently, I spoke with mayors from the other big four cities in Tennessee, Memphis, Knoxville, and Chattanooga, about the specific problem of delayed test results. We've communicated our concerns to the state along with several ideas to improve the expediency of test results statewide, including the implementation of pool testing where appropriate, and using the state's CARES Act funds to incentivize more timely delivery of test results. Timely delivery will help improve our testing effectiveness. Remember, Nashville, don't share your air. If eight out of 10 Nashvillians wear a mask, we can avoid further shutdown and fully reopen our economy without interruption. As long as our school children cannot attend classes in person for fear of falling ill to the virus or transmitting it to their loved ones, all of us have a long way to go to improve the public health condition of our city. Metro Public Health has distributed more than 287,000 free masks, 90,000 of which are distributed through our community partners, including Conexion Americas, the Islamic Center of Tennessee, and the Ethiopian Community Association. You can receive a free mask by visiting the Lentz Public Health Center Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. until 3 p.m. Recent storms damaged our community assessment center located at 2491 Murfreesboro Pike in Antioch. This site will be closed today for repairs and is anticipated to be reopened tomorrow. In the meantime, you can receive a free diagnostic test at one of Metro's two other assessment centers at Nissan Stadium Lot N or at Meharry, Meharry, Meharry Medical College located at 918 21st Avenue North. Visit covid19.nashville.gov for more details. In Nashville's modified phase two, businesses that were identified as sources of infection, including bars and restaurants, were either temporarily closed or moved back to phase one capacities. The majority of other small businesses in Davidson County are open at either phase two or phase three levels with proper public health protocols in place to keep workers and customers safe. They are doing the right thing to protect our community, and they are counting on others to help them keep their doors open and their staff employed. Now this morning, it's my pleasure to welcome Moselle Martin, who with his wife, Aretha Martin, own Martin's Chicken and Waffles in Goodlettsville. He is here this morning to discuss his challenges as a small business owner and entrepreneur, and to appeal to all Nashvillians about the urgency to practice healthy habits to keep our economy running. And Bill Miller, owner of the Icon Entertainment Group, was scheduled to be here this morning, but will not be able to join us due to an emergency. Icon's efforts are reflected in the iconic billboard of Johnny Cash himself, wearing a mask to inspire friends, family, and fans to stay safe. And it is a new symbol for Nashville in these challenging times. We can draw on our past, and our humor, and we can adopt. I'll turn it over now to Dr. Alice Shehanger, Chair of the Metro Coronavirus Task Force. Thank you, Mayor Cooper, and good morning, Nashville. Here's the latest on coronavirus in Davidson County. We now have 20,488 confirmed cases. That's 363 new cases in the past 24 hours. There are currently 5,341 active cases. While this is the lowest number we have seen in two weeks, it still is double the number of where we were last month. 73% of all confirmed cases, or 15,000 residents, have now recovered. Since our update on Thursday, 19 Nashvillians have died because of confirmed cases of COVID-19. 180 Nashvillians have now died because of confirmed COVID-19, and the mortality rate for our city is at 0.9%. We continue to monitor our hospitals, and this morning, 18% of floor beds and 12% of ICU beds are available. Our rolling average is 342 new cases per day. That's down 21 cases since last Thursday. The average has stabilized over the past two weeks. Now, while it is stable, this is still a very high new number of cases. In fact, it's double the number of new cases from one month ago when there were 172 cases on average per day. <clears throat> the seven-day positivity rate, or the percentage of people 
who have tested positive over this past week is at 13.3%. Ideally, we want the positivity rate to be 10% or less. Our rate is above the threshold, but it is improving. It was at its highest at 18.5% on July 15th and has been declining ever since. Finally, our transmission rate is just under one this morning. At the end of last month, our transmission rate was above 1.1 and climbing. Our 14-day rolling average was on the rise. Our seven-day positivity rate was increasing. At that moment, masks were mandated for everyone out in public. And we went to a modified phase two that restricted dine-in restaurants and closed bars. And last week, a 10 p.m. curfew was implemented for all restaurants, dine-in services. Most Nashvillians follow these directives and our metrics have stabilized. The action we've taken and your compliance has had an impact. But this is not over. We still have to go a long way to bring these numbers down to a, a more normal and more comfortable level. Yesterday, as the mayor said, we met with Dr. Deborah Burks. She recognized the actions we've taken and what you have done and, we, and the fact that we are starting to see a difference. And they have recommendations, excuse me, and they have recommended the same actions to other states and cities, mask mandates, closing bars, and limiting indoor dining. It's not just theory. These measures have worked in other cities, in other states, and they're working right here in Nashville right now. But we cannot declare victory yet. We cannot let up. Instead, we need to focus and redouble our efforts to continue the momentum. Now, one final note, the Community Assessment Center at Kmart location in Antioch was damaged yesterday with some pop-up storms. It is closed today and will open tomorrow. So today, if you need to be assessed, please go to Nissan Stadium or Meharry Medical College, and they are open until 1 p.m. Finally, for months now, the mayor and I have been working to provide the latest information on this pandemic. We want to make sure that you know about testing, you know about masks, and you know how to protect yourselves and how to prevent the spread of this virus. And we'll continue to give you the best information we have based on the data and science. And I wanna thank the media for helping us deliver this message. Our goal is to keep everyone safe and healthy. Thank you for your support and for everything you've done to stay the course. Now please keep it up and don't let your guard down yet. I now would like to introduce Moselle Martin. Thank you. Good morning, Nashville. I am Moza Martin. This is my wife, Aretha Martin, and we are owners of Martin's Chicken and Waffles. And we're also proud to say that we are living the Nashville dream. The community support has helped our family go from a food trailer to a dedicated location inside the Rivergate Mall food court. Our dream, like many other small businesses, feels like a nightmare right now because of COVID-19 and what the pandemic has done to our businesses like ours. None of us could foresee the impact that this would have on our community and the ability that our businesses would have planned. We would never have planned for this. Right now, like many small businesses, we want to get back to a new place of normalcy so we can continue to be productive and to serve our community. My family and I, my family and I believe in our business we believe in the youth that we hire, and we also, and most importantly, the customers that we serve believe in our business. What we are asking everyone in Nashville to do is to remember that small businesses have families, they have employees, and customers who believe in them. Wearing a mask not only helps to prevent, wearing a mask not only helps to protect you and your family, but it helps to protect small businesses and those we employ. When you, when you wear a mask, you help to flatten the curve, which keeps businesses open, businesses open and our community thriving. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Martin. Mr. Martin, we'll now begin taking media questions. 
Let's start with Julia Palazzo at WKRN. Julia. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for another update. Um, Mayor Cooper, the chain smokers hosted a concert in the Hamptons, and now they're under fire because footage showed crowds of people standing close together, even though it was a drive-in concert, so people weren't listening to those rules. Um, the chain smokers are talking about wanting to do a concert here in Nashville. What is your response to that, them potentially coming here, and would you want to prevent that from happening, and are you able to? And Dr. Jahangir, teachers in Metro say they want to go back into the building as long as 14 days of no new cases happen. Do you think this is a realistic goal? Thank you. Thank you, Julia. Mayor Cooper. Um, thank you, Julia. Um, that's your question about the Chain Smokers um, music group. Uh, any music group that comes to Nashville is going to have to abide by our public health rules, and we expect them to do a good job of doing that. There was a drive-in concert hosted by Live Nation recently at Nissan, and um, I'm, I'm told it was very successful, really. There were some tightening of rules that needed to happen, but it shows that you can have a protocol, you can adjust to keeping public health uh, foremost in mind and get on with reopening economy. Some things are not impossible, they just have to be carefully done. As to um, reopening schools, uh, I'll leave a lot of that to Dr. Battle, who I know is in close consultation with the reopening committee. Um, at what level? Uh, all, all of this is going to be, of course, a deep challenge. But the one thing we know is we cannot get there unless 8 out of 10 Nashvillians start wearing masks. In all cases, we can't get there unless you have that kind of deep compliance. So let's get that done first so that we can have the happy um, experience of kind of discussing at what low d disease level you are able to reopen schools, certainly not in the current um, spike in cases. And then again, this all goes back to 8 out of 10 Nashvillians wearing masks, really 8 out of 10 Tennesseans before this is probably over. Julia, um, regarding the, the metric of no new cases in 14 days, we all would like to get there, but let's be realistic. Until there is a vaccine and there's herd immunity, the, the probability of getting to absolutely zero new cases is, is almost not possible. However, um, what I think we need to focus on is bringing the number of new cases down. Um, there's a metric number of new cases per 100,000 residents that helps um, equalize this across um, the country. Um, Anything from 25 or above is determined critical, and 10 and below is what allows you to go into nursing homes right now. Nashville right now is at 41 um, point something, for, so 41 people per 100,000 of new cases. That's better than the 60 something we were at um, a few weeks ago. So as I mentioned earlier, or as the mayor mentioned, we are in a, a, a very, um, we're stable, but we're still in a very serious situation. Now, our efforts that we're doing, hopefully we'll bring that metric down below 25 um, and ideally one day below 10. But to say to have zero new cases, as much as we all would like that, I think that's not going to be a realistic expectation for a long, long time with this virus. So thank you. Ian Jong at the Tennessean. Hi, good morning. Um, I wanted to know if uh, Dr. Jahangir could talk about the ICU bed availability that's dipped down to 12%, um, as well as can, is there a status update on efforts for Southeast Nashville, including you know, providing temporary housing and financial aid for those who cannot work while getting sick or while they are sick, excuse me. And my last question is, um, when you talk about getting eight out of 10 people to wear masks, how are we measuring that or figuring out if we reach that metric? Thank you. Thank you, Ian. Dr. Junger. I'll answer your first and third question. Um, first, in regards to ICU beds, yeah, our ICU bed capacity is at 12% um, right now. Um, I want to remind everyone, Nashville is a, is a big um, hospital city. We provide a lot of tertiary and quaternary care. Um, that ICU capacity is not just COVID patients, it's people who have, have heart transplants, liver transplants, have trauma. Um, right now, we're averaging around 200 patients admitted to the hospital. I don't have the exact number um, this morning. Um, one thing that I took out of our conversation with Dr. Burks yesterday um, is, is this is becoming a real rural 
problem. It's not just an urban problem. And as rural hospitals become more filled because they're smaller, um, just emergency access type hospitals, those patient burdens will be moving to Nashville. And so what I think is critical is we need to make sure we have a capacity that, that fulfills that. And um, we, we are working very closely with each hospital CEO and the state to try to make sure that we have um, good capacity to take care of COVID patients in addition to every other kind of patient out there. Now, regarding your question around how do we know 80% of, of people are wearing masks? Well, listen, society has to hold itself accountable. It has been shown that if you keep 80% of people or more wear masks, numbers get better. And we're seeing that here in Nashville. So have, do I go out there and count every single person? No, I don't. But do I hope that you hold your neighbor accountable? I, I very much ask that you do. And by holding people accountable and ensuring that 80 plus percent of people wear a mask, then I think we will bring our numbers down. We're starting to see that. And I want us to continue that. And now um, I'll defer to Dr. Caldwell for your question around the Southeast. Thank you. As for the uh, Southeast uh, plan, uh, known as the at-risk uh, Nashvillians plan, because it's more than just Southeast. We're still working out a lot of those details regarding housing. We hope that they'll be resolved soon. We're pleased to let you know that mobile testing efforts are uh, being implemented and are continuing with all of our community partners in all of these areas where we've identified uh, at-risk Nashvillians, and we really appreciate all of our support, their support regarding uh, their partnership, and uh, uh, extra appreciation to uh, Fabian Bedne for helping us uh, with all of the connectivity. Chris Davis of News Channel 5. Chris? Good morning. Uh, Mayor Cooper, last week you were asked if you were considering uh, closing Lower Broadway, and you said everything was on the table. After monitoring Broadway over the weekend, is your view still the same? What does it look like uh, from Metro Health's perspective? I'm sorry, Chris, can you repeat the last part of your question? Just what did, uh, what did it look like from Metro Health's perspective? Did we see some progress? Did that 10 o'clock curfew help uh, with restaurants? in that area. We'll start with Mayor Cooper. Well, thank you, Chris. Um, you know, we're constantly going to evaluate that. Um, I think the reports are the 10 o'clock did help. There's still a lot of people. Many more people are wearing masks and engaging in better and more distanced behavior. So on a Day-by-day day basis, we'll be looking at all the health practices in order to keep people safe. I do think the conclusion is that there is a material improvement. Is that all that we want to see? Also, probably not. But again, we're going to try to improve our way into a better health condition in Nashville. Harriet Wallace at Fox 17. You're on the air. Good morning. Uh, I've got a few questions. My first question is to Mayor Cooper. Mayor Cooper, you all have talked at length about the uh, critical nature of coordinated effort from surrounding counties. We saw yesterday uh, continuance of you and Governor Lee uh, to a degree not being on the same page when it comes to uh, enforcing masks, uh, closing bars, or restricting their hours. If you could speak to any frustration or your thoughts about you all not being on the same page, but how necessary that is. My second question, over the weekend we saw, uh, after you had put in some restrictions, we saw some officers standing uh, by uh, not writing the citations, people still out and about. Your response to people ignoring the order from the CEO of this city. And then lastly, Dr. Burke saying yesterday, uh, closing bars, reducing in-dining uh, numbers is critical to reducing COVID-19 numbers, but you put in the 10 p.m. closure. After that meeting, is there any chance that you will pivot to closing them as opposed to the 10 p.m. closure time? And I'm happy to repeat them if needed. Thank you, Harriet. 
Mayor Cooper. Um, thank you, um, Harriet. Let's, I was just making a few notes on your um, questions. Um, I'm thankful for Dr. Burks being here and flagging at the White House level um, what has worked and sharing it with us and the state. And I think there's every reason to believe that what they're asking us to do is working. Masks, you of course need to have a broad level of compliance and then having uh, restrictions on gatherings, particularly on gatherings um, of younger people, that the spread among young people under 30 is a particular concern because they're out and they're mobile and they do see more people often in a day, have the ability to see more people than maybe older people do. So the, um, the bar spread with younger people is clearly a national concern and we have addressed that here. Now, we all agree, and I know the state um, worries about this too, on enforcing. And enforcing, I think, has to be done with our media partners explaining clearly to people the need and that we have to ultimately self-enforce. Now, if you're called on it and people are, you know, out of vanity, really not wearing masks and actively endangering other people, then I hope that our public health officials and our law enforcement officers will always protect the public health in doing that. And we will call on that doing it, but, but nothing will be as strong as people self-enforcing on each other. And I think there's a little bit of perhaps a disagreement, um, well, a, a kind of a change in the view of masks. We view, and I think Dr. Burke's view, is that masks allow you to reopen the economy. Masks allow you to reopen the economy. That's your tool in getting us back to reopening the economy. It is, um, it is not an obstacle to reopening the, account, the economy. It is the tool to reopening the economy, and that's what we want to get done ultimately, and we need to do that statewide. Now, counties, individual counties, when allowed to do it, many of them have followed suit. And in the Nashville region, almost all counties uh, directly touching us have a mask order. We feel that that needs to continue. And we, of course, would urge the state to allow them to do that. And we are grateful for the state letting counties uh, enforce this public health protocol. Uh, and of course, it would be perhaps easier if there was a state action, but this is what we have and we're going to do it. And right now, the evidence is that it does work slowly but surely when you get a level of compliance, even at the county level, and that's what we're committed to doing. Kathleen Siri at Fox 17. Good morning, thanks for taking our questions. Um, so this is a question for Mayor Cooper. We're seeing more and more small local businesses, particularly restaurants, closing their doors in Nashville. Is Nashville doing enough to help these businesses or is there anything else that they can be doing to kind of assist them during these times? Thank you. Thank you, Kathleen. Mayor Cooper. Well, thank, thank you. Um, I'm sure not enough. It's sure it's devastating. And I wanna thank all particularly the small businesses and small restaurants that are always vulnerable but valued for creating the unique culture that we have in Nashville. Um, it's them who are doing a lot of that. And again, my answer is the way we can help them is all wear a mask. The way we can help them is all wear a mask. If our transmission rate is down to 0.99, let's drive it to 0.9. And you'll see the slow diminution of cases and that will allow us to uh, reopen and people feel good about reopening. The, these businesses require customers feeling safe. It's not up to the government, it's up to the customers feeling safe, and the staff being safe, and then we can get back to um, the great city that we have. Nancy Amos at WSMV. Hi, thank you for taking questions again. It's always so helpful for our viewers. 
I have four questions. One, um, the transpotainment ban that went into effect sort of at the last minute over the weekend, how successful has that been? Um, were you seeing good compliance? Uh, can you talk about the turnaround time now for tests? And can you talk about whether we're going to get instant testing here? Uh, also, can you address the issue of um, wearing the, the call to wear masks indoors in multi-generational homes? Thank you. Dr. John Gear. Thanks, Nancy. Um, I'm going to maybe take your last question first. It is more and more being recommended that um, if you are in a multi-generational home um, or anywhere where you have somebody who's more at risk, um, excuse me, just my just my glasses fogging, and, and we wear a mask here all the time when we're in the crowds. When we're in, when you're in a multi-generational home, or when you're more and more um, in a place where maybe you have a loved one that's higher risk, so they, um, you should wear a mask to protect that individual from from you being p perhaps an asymptomatic carrier. Um, approximately 40% of, of younger people especially are asymptomatic carriers, right? So wearing a mask will protect close contacts you have even at home. So wearing a mask is not just a public thing, right? It's, it, it really prohibits transmission of, of the virus or limit, minimizes it. So um, I think each family should take in consideration how to best minimize risks, and that's one way to do it. Regarding your turnaround time, which, um, looking at, at the report, our worst as in all the labs in tennis in Nashville right now, we're, there's still about a three or four day turnaround time from when a test is taken to when um, the state is notified and we're notified. Um, I do want to say that it doesn't mean that the results take that long for an individual to get because an individual may through electronic portals um, that the healthcare provider may have may be able to get the results back maybe a, in a day or two. But for the whole cycle of tests taken in a lab, State's notified, state is then notifying the local county health department. We're averaging a little over four, three to four days right now. Um, I think it's four, I think it's exactly four. I'm um, sorry, my phone died. So I can give you the exact number, but I think it's around four days right now. So thank you so much. Uh, as for instant testing, we really are very interested in implementing this as soon as we can. Uh, we are looking at a few pilot sites to be able to try to do that right now. We are still learning more about this. Uh, and uh, as soon as we feel that we can implement it on a larger scale, uh, we're going to do so. And Mr. Atkins will answer the question about transportation. Yes, and last weekend uh, was the first, you know, weekend of implementation on the uh, restrictions on the transportainment uh, venues. Uh, we appreciate the work of the Metro Nashville Police Department last weekend in enforcing uh, the uh, restrictions. They engaged actively with uh, at least four transportainment vehicles and explained the order and the restrictions there and issued warnings where uh, appropriate and got uh, a level of compliance with those companies. Uh, keep in mind that the uh, party wagons, transportainment uh, venues are not allowed to operate if the patrons are consuming alcohol. So some of them chose to continue to operate without the patrons continuing out, uh, consuming alcohol and also maintaining social distancing. So. Uh, on the first weekend, it seemed to go smoothly. Uh, we have jurisdictional issues. Some of these uh, venues, depending on who issues their permits or licenses, uh, metro government uh, regulates them to a certain extent. The state and even the federal government issue some uh, permits for those. So we're still in close consultation with Metro Nashville Police Department and Metro Legal to make sure we're doing things right as far as enforcement with them. But I think for the first vehicle, uh, first weekend of the uh, restrictions, it, it went fairly well. Thank you. Our last question today is from Dennis Ferrier at Fox 17. You're on the air. 
Thank you. My question is for Mayor Cooper. There's a widespread feeling out there among taxpayers, and I, I'd like you to respond to it, that Metro government has not suffered to the degree that the private citizen has. The idea of layoffs, being fired. We've heard these restaurant businesses down 25 to 90%. And of course, Metro has no furloughs, no layoffs. And I know that the mayor would not compare not getting a raise to being fired. So just a response to what I'm hearing out on the streets from people who feel like there are just two different stories going on here as far as a degree of suffering. Mayor Cooper. Well, um, thank you, Dennis, for that question. Um, and it's um, good for me to hear it. Um, there may be lots more suffering as Metro is dedicated to getting us through this. Um, there are different levels of suffering. One, it would be kind of the deliberate financial emergency that we had pushed ourselves into. You can't use the word receivership, but technically kind of receivership because we had been irresponsible in the overall structure of our finances. And now we have solved that problem of irresponsibility. And now um, we have a stable financial footing, but we may require the sacrifice of our employees and services um, as we get through the rest of the virus. We don't know when the second spike will be over. We don't know when schools are starting. Um, there, we don't know what the revenues will be for the city going forward. Uh, if it's an improved condition, we will be thrilled to uh, make those adjustments going forward. But right now, we are in the middle of the crisis. We can't call it as being over. Um, if I can emphasize something that I said today, it is serious but stable. We're thrilled that it's stable. But, you know, these are slightly comforting words to a family when you hear them in the hospital. But, you know, it's still cause for a deep level of alarm and concern. And, you know, it's not, uh, I do object a little bit to the terminology of taxpayers wanting to punish Metro employees and make them suffer. We don't want Metro employees to suffer. We don't want businesses to suffer. We don't want anybody to suffer. We're just trying to manage together to get through this and do it in as fair a way as possible. And I am proud of the leadership shown by the council and by the city to put our finances, um, which were troubled anyway, back on a stable footing. That's our responsibility to do that. Now, if the virus requires sacrifice from Metro and Metro employees, you know, they understand that that is, comes along with public service. Uh, and I appreciate that in advance. Thank you. Those are all the questions we have this morning. I'd like to thank Mr. Moselle Martin for joining us today. The next scheduled Metro COVID-19 press briefing will air on Thursday, July 30th at 9.30 a.m. Thank you for joining us. This concludes today's event. This has been a service of the Metro National Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.org.